So Carl asked me to briefly talk about uh, the progress in concrete pavement technology over the last 40 years. Basically, about the time I started my work at the Portland Cement Association uh, in 1978. Um, so before I do that, I would like to really uh, 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 say my sincere appreciation to Kurt, of course, as chair of the committee 325 and the members and SCI for supporting these two sessions today. It's of course a great honor to have my career acknowledged by my peers and colleagues. Um, so now we talk about uh, what you are missing in Baltimore. So this was supposed to have been a session. Uh, you would have seen, been in Baltimore and visited all these nice places. Baltimore, no matter what you may have heard, is still a very nice touristy place. And of course, uh, very famous for the blue crab cakes and bought, bought lots of uh, blue crabs that would have been awaiting you if you had been in Baltimore. So um, I'm going to be focusing on my last 40, 45 years uh, in practice, uh, basically uh, the period from about 1978 to date and discussing the innovations in concrete pavement technology that led to progress, which of course, anytime we have progress, we improve our best practices. So innovations are necessary for progress and progress is necessary to improve best practices. We don't develop best practices uh, on its own. We need to have innovations and all, as this uh, slide shows, uh, we have been innovating and improving our best practices to result in concrete pavement life from about 10 years in 1920s to 20 years, 1960s. And now we are designing for 40 years. And uh, this is mostly the US uh, uh, primary and interested highway system. And uh, hopefully in the next few years, we'll be looking at much longer lifespan or service life minimal maintenance and modular uh, pavements, considering resiliency and sustainability and so forth. What was happening in 1978, about the time when I started my work, uh, June of 1978, I joined Portland Cement Association and started actively working in concrete pavements. And at that time, the highway construction was ending, interested highways, 44, 45,000 miles of highway construction program was ending. Uh, highways, concrete pavements were designed using, designed for 20 year uh, initial life using the ASHO design equations uh, derived from the ASHO road test and also using the 1967 PCS stress-based design procedure developed by Fordyce and uh, Bob Packer. Uh, they were, that was uh, the design procedure was based on the Westergaard equation using the picket and race stress charts. A lot of you may not know what the stress charts were, but in our days, that's what we use uh, to compute stresses in concrete pavements. And this, similarly for the airport concrete pavement design too, uh, using the Westergaard equation and the stress charts, uh, slip from paving was widely used in what we refer to as the father's concrete mixtures were also in use. Uh, and paving concrete durability understanding was just beginning. By contrast, I on the right-hand side box, uh, the state of technology overall, we were still using IBM mainframe computers using punch cards. I myself did my PhD thesis, uh, uh, developing a finite element program uh, with boxes and boxes of punch card that I carried around with me for quite a few years. Uh, we had programmable computers, calculators, no PCs, no laptops, and Chicago Cubs still were without a championship. And this was time I was, I had just moved to Chicago area. 
and Microsoft founder was founded in 1975. 1976 revenue was 16,000. If we had bought some shares at that time, we would not be here talking with you. Okay. Uh, Apple was founded by the same time, and the movies popular were Star Wars, Superman, and Deer Hunter, just to uh, relate what was happening in about 1978 time period. Okay. And um, uh, continuing the state of technology in 1978, there was actually a moratorium on automatic double bar inserters. In those days, during the interstate construction, they were using J-hooks to install double bars. And there was lots of problems with alignment. And so there was a moratorium until about mid-1980s when the modern double bar inserters uh, were developed. Uh, the concrete overlay market was just developing. We were still using skewed joints. Curling and warping effects were understood, but not incorporated in the design procedures. RCC was just used, was just beginning. And we actually had a good sized project on pre stressed concrete pavements. Uh, that technology really didn't uh, develop further, but there was some promise. Uh, that was one of my first projects when I started work at uh, PC and work with Peter Nussbaum and Ben Freeberg. Uh, and uh, there was no FWD testing at that time. So most of the load testing was done using in-situ instrumentation and uh, concrete pavement smoothness was becoming a concern. Uh, in terms of the academia, uh, several universities were beginning to teach pavement engineering, including concrete pavement engineering. Um, the most popular textbooks were Yoder and Witzak's textbook and Huang's textbook. And now we have several textbooks. Uh, Norm Dilat's textbook is very popular. We have lots of uh, additional information. The text center continues to produce a lot of good information, technical information. And then we have lots and lots of uh, uh, guidelines and tech briefs and so forth in comparison to what existed in 1978. So again, to relate where we were in, in that time frame, uh, the first international conference uh, was referred to as the Peru conferences. The first one was held in February 1977, chaired by Eldon Yoder at Purdue University. And you can see some of the key papers that were present. And I just selected a few of them to give you a range of uh, topics that were discussed. Zero maintenance was a key topic in those days. Uh, and then, of course, uh, several papers on design and construction, uh, some concrete pavement related papers from Europe. Uh, joint faulting was an issue of uh, topic of discussion. Uh, CRCP, more improved design procedures were being discussed. Uh, Pressurized pavement eliminating keys from construction joints. Uh, econom econocrit uh, was uh, being discussed also, and few other items. So this was 1977, and comparison to that, the upcoming conference coming up in August 2020, uh, in August, uh, the type of topics that we are currently uh, focusing on. ASR continues to be a big issue. Uh, we have much better analysis procedure for rigid airport pavements, far field, and lots of other topics. Uh, I'm not going to go read through them, but you can see that today's uh, hot topics are much different than what we were discussing in 1977 time period. Um, the Ashton design procedure continues to be a big uh, key item of discussion. And of course, we are also now beginning to talk about precast concrete pavements. So some of the things that have changed since 1978, we are no longer using uh, reinforced concrete pavements. 
We are using uh, concrete shoulders, widened lane, precast concrete pavements have been developed uh, or being implement has been implemented have been implemented since 2001. Peter Smith was one of the first one to get a patent on the super slab system, and then uh, we have been doing double bar alignment testing. Uh, Paul Okamoto and I actually evaluated double alignment at the first modern DBI project at, along I-86 in Pocatello, Idaho. And since then, the MIT scan technology uh, has been developed and is being implemented in the US. And that is allow, that allowed the use of uh, double, bar in, double bar inserters by lots, uh, many uh, high agencies. So this is the double bar uh, MIT scan for double bar alignment testing. As I indicated before, uh, with the availability of this device, uh, more and more uh, high agencies felt comfortable allowing the use of the double bar inserters. And we also have now the Mira tomographer uh, that does something similar, but much more uh, in an advanced manner using a 3D approach. Um, some continuing on the discussion of the innovations since 1978, the Innovative Payment Research Fund Foundation uh, supported development of uh, many best practices guides in, for highways and airports. Uh, and the sharp funding led to the long-term payment performance program, the construction of SPS test sections, and the uh, uh, study of the in, in situ or existing payment sections referred to as the GPS experiments. So lots of research being taking place. Uh, we have the Min Road, the Florida Route 301 will be uh, hopefully be in place sometime this year. <coughs> the mechanistic empirical design procedure has been advanced using the LDPP data and data from the Min Road. Um, and Quite a few additional innovation, focus on construction quality, focus on concrete durability, and rapid rehabilitation is becoming a big key um, area of uh, interest with the development, uh, with the increase in traffic in all urban areas. Uh, but just to also mention that uh, during this time period, the International Society for Concrete Payment was established. The FAA Tech Center was established. I mentioned the IPRF. Uh, the CP Tech Center has been established to continue to promote innovations and improve the best practices. Uh, and the FHW uh, has um, FHW developed the mobile concrete lab. Uh, that goes around showcasing all the in new innovations, concrete testing and so forth. And of course, there's the NCC that shares, uh, allows the sharing of innovation, uh, new technologies within high agencies. And the MIT hub is doing some excellent work related to sustainability. So again, some additional uh, innovations. I'm trying to give you a sort of a history of the developments. Uh, the FWD following with the flat meter was developed for just as far as the concrete payments are concerned for joint testing. So now at least we can determine what is the joint effectiveness or load transfer efficiency at joints uh, more rapidly. Uh, than before, we are doing smoothness testing using the International Roughness Index protocol. Uh, payment management systems have been implemented. The finite element analysis techniques 
uh, have led to much advanced uh, analysis of highway as well as airfield concrete pavements. And we, have developed, we are developing and improving the con improved concrete mixtures uh, using finer cements, cementitious material, range of admixtures, optimized aggregate gradation. And uh, I should mention that Jim Shilston was one of the key player or key actor in pushing uh, or understanding how the optimized gradation impacts concrete mixtures. And we have super air meters, electrical resistivity testing. So lots of uh, innovations have taken place. And the introduction of the hyperpave is helping uh, contractors uh, uh, improve when joints are cut. Uh, it's being used as a QE, QC process. Um, on the European side, uh, they have been using two leaf concrete pavements, primarily uh, to use locus or recycle aggregate in the lower lift and to use better aggregates in the upper lift. Uh, this ties in with the uh, uh, exposed aggregate surface uh, that they're using for the top uh, at the surface. So the top lift uh, uses uh, smaller size aggregates. So the two layer uh, placement uh, facilitates use of exposed aggregate technique in the Euro in, uh, European market that leads to low noise concrete surfaces. And just to go back to the European uh, uh, concrete pavement placement to lift, you can see the uh, bottom lift placed, and there is a technician inserting tie bars. And this is such a dense lift, there's no sinkage um, standing for the uh, sinkage uh, at the feet of the technician. So there's exposed aggregate, and also the Europeans uh, developed, at least in, in Germany, they started using a geotextile uh, five millimeter thick as a layer between the concrete and the cement treated base. And we sort of imported that technology and we are using it for short slab, uh, unbounded overlay of concrete over concrete short slab technology. It's, and has a uh, lot of promise uh, with this technology. Uh, we've been uh, doing a lot of work uh, with consolidation, uh, improving concrete consolidation, developing impermeable mix concrete mixtures, improving the air void system, uh, use of a smart vibrator system was implemented about 20, 25 years ago, or maybe before that. But it says uh, all of these innovations have led to better concrete mixtures in the field. With respect to design, we have made lots of improvements, starting with the Ashto um, road test, uh, several versions of the Ashto design guide. And um, since then, we've come up with the mechanistic empirical design procedure. So again, uh, in 1977 time period, our design procedure were being developed. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on zero maintenance design. A uh, big study led by Mike Darter and Ernie Berenberg uh, developed lots of good uh, guidelines for zero maintenance pavements. Uh, but at the same time, uh, in, in the 1984, Bob Packard developed his uh, improved uh, design procedure for highways and streets based on finite limit, uh, finite limit uh, analysis procedure. And now there's a Windows-based computer program available uh, referred to as StreetPay. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, again, the advances that have continued in the pavement design, concrete pavement design with the development of the mechanistic empirical design guide and the uh, pavement ME design procedure. This is resulting in a more cost-effective, more reliable designs. And most of the US agencies have adopted this new procedure. So this was a big breakthrough uh, in improving our design procedures, uh, more reliable, developing more reliable design procedures. Um, so some additional innovations continuing that discussion. We have now moved to single cut joint sewing, getting away from the uh, double step process. Uh, first cut and the second cut, uh, most agencies are moving to single cut joint sewing, uh, narrow joints, uh, no more skewed joints, 15 foot joint spacing is becoming a standard or a default value. And uh, we continue to advance the CRCP technology, simplified terminal joint design. We also develop rapid punch out repairs using precast panels. Uh, there was a project uh, developed by Illinois Tollway, uh, south side of Chicago that used precast panels to do overnight repair of CRCP, punch out repair of CRCP. Um, some additional innovations related to surface texture and noise. Noise is becoming a big issue in the last 10, 15 years. And the industry has continued to improve the surface texture characteristics and the development of the next generation surface texture. Surface texture, hopefully, uh, will lead to low noise surfaces and wider implementation. Um, so we have moved from transverse tightening to longitudinal tightening. Uh, some agencies are allowing uh, conventional grinding on new concrete surfaces and exposed aggregate in the European market. And now the next generation surface texture technique is being implemented. Um, we also made progress in the concrete overlay technology by developing the short slab, uh, thin concrete overlay technology. Uh, this was developed in the late 1990s and we are continuing to make progress. These are typically short slab, about six foot by six foot typically five to seven inches thick. And uh, they may be placed over a milled asphalt surface or using a leveling layer, uh, which would be referred to as a directly placed or unbonded overlay. But basically these are all short step thin. And performance to date over the last 15, 20 years of performance indicates uh, one constructed well, and designed properly, they're providing good service uh, in many states. Colorado is one of the leading users of uh, this type of overlays. Uh, smoothness testing, again, we have made uh, significant uh, advances, moving from the California profilograph to the lightweight profiler for, during, uh, for construction time testing to the high-speed inertial profiler for in-situ testing, in-service testing, basically going from uh, testing, referred to as from cradle to grave. We are using the same indicator of smoothness from uh, construction time to in-service uh, testing. So we get a better feel for how smoothness changes from day one to over a period of time. Um, we have also start, developed the RCC technology implemented during the 1980s. Um, it's a good innovation, but 
in 2021, we are still trying to get it right. Uh, we still have some questions about density testing, uh, what the design criteria needs to be, or at least the testing criteria. Uh, we have some issues with bonding of leaves for thick uh, uh, pavements when we have to use multiple leaves. Uh, and the question is, are these construction quality issues or technology issues? But the technology is sound and applied correctly. Uh, I think we're getting good projects. And now my favorite topic, uh, precast concrete pavement technology was developed in 2001, uh, implemented in 2001. Uh, New York State Thruve did the first uh, production project in Texas DOT did a demonstration project. Um, and as I mentioned before, Peter Smith was the first one to get a patent on the Fort Miller super step system. And this technology is now routinely used as shown here uh, in several states, California being one of the big users now, uh, New York uh, and New Jersey, Illinois. Uh, they're also somewhat not necessarily routine users, but at least California is a, becoming to be a routine, routine users for payment rehabilitation. Um, it's a nighttime application. Basically, you are doing all of the work at night and opening to traffic early in the morning. So there's no disruption to daytime traffic operations. Some additional innovation, stringless paving, profile testing behind the paver, uh, continue to help uh, make construction more uh, efficient. And in terms of the uh, repair technology, we have developed the developed retrofit techniques, grinding uh, for smoothness and surface texture restoration, accelerated construction techniques, fast setting materials, and so forth. Uh, we haven't started using the ultra high performance concrete yet, but I'm not sure if we will be doing that in future or not, but that's a promising technology also. Um, and uh, I think that's what I wanted to cover and then looking forward to another 40 years. What do we see? At least what does a design engineer starting out today or a construction a concrete pavement technology engineer starting out today, what is he going to be seeing in future over the next 40 years? Um, from my perspective, I think the, the design procedure will continue to be refined to allow minimal maintenance concrete pavement designs, hopefully perpetual life using modular concrete pavements for minor repair and rehab, all based on green technologies. So the green technology will be a key emphasis in future. Hopefully faulting will no longer be a design consideration for new reconstructed pavements. We will have eliminated faulting development and hopefully eliminated cracking development too. Um, no radical changes in pavement types expected. Uh, we are heavily invested in the certain type of equipment and so we're going to be using the construction equipment to continue to build jointed concrete pavements, hopefully more CRCP because CRCP tends to be uh, more of a zero maintenance pavement and then use the precast for rehab and CRC overlays of asphalt and concrete pavements. Uh, as I mentioned, because of the heavy investment in paving equipment, paving equipment will remain essentially the same, but hopefully be more efficient. Uh, concrete mixtures, hopefully there'll be no early edge failures and very low carbon footprint and extremely durable. And then the question is what design criteria will be addressing in for what type of truck traffic is the technology changes with relation to the type of trucks being used on the highway. And I think that's about all I have. I 
thank you again, Kurt, uh, for uh, this recognition and giving an opportunity to discuss the last 40 years of innovations. Uh, the last 40 years, at least of my career, have been very fulfilling working with you all to improve concrete pavement technology. I think collectively we've been very innovative and progressive. Thank you. Thank you, Shiraz. We appreciate it very much. And I really appreciate the uh, kind of the historical perspective of things. We've got just a couple minutes for some questions. So, and there are two questions in the box. Shiraz, I'll pose them to you. One, I think you've already touched on a little bit. Uh, one's the question is, what do you see as the future of CRC? I think the future looks very promising because as we move towards zero maintenance, I know this is, used to be a catchword uh, in the 1980s, as I indicated before. Uh, I think uh, there's a good potential for achieving zero maintenance or what I refer to as minimal maintenance uh, payments and CRC payment come very close to that. And that's why I also indicated in my last slide that I hope to see more CRC overlays uh, to rehabilitate asphalt as well as uh, concrete pavements because with the improvement in the terminal design, uh, CRC does be become a, more of a zero or minimal maintenance perpetual pavement. All right, thank you. Um, and the next question maybe is asking you to look in the crystal ball a little bit, but I, I think you may have touched on this as well with your reference to green, uh, green technology, but the question is what technologies or designs do you think will be crucial for uh, President Biden's infrastructure plan? Uh, that's a big question. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's a $2 trillion question. Uh, no, uh, I, I think uh, if the highway agencies seriously look at the future of pavement, again, looking at the zero maintenance pavements, we just cannot afford to keep going back and fixing our roads. The infrastructure is becoming uh, very delicate. Uh, the transportation infrastructure, we can't afford to do any lane closures in urban areas. Our urban areas continue to expand. And so we have to uh, look at solutions or strategies that give us longer lasting payments. And I think uh, they need to be sustainable. They need to be resilient. The resiliency is becoming uh, another uh, topic of uh, concern. So I think concrete payments uh, addresses all of these different points and hopefully will play a key role in the infrastructure improvements in the US. 